curious to, to learn that um, this year the police department lost their grant for school resource officers. So, you know, as I was reading the transcript, and you, you know, we read about the increase in teenage drinking in our community, and then I noticed several um, issues with domestic violence where teenagers are in, involved. Um, you know, and then we learned that our school resource officers, that they lost the grant, they're not in the classroom with kids. They, they will continue to work with the teachers and providing them with information. Um, the cooperative effort is still there. They um, still participate in the youth at risk. Um, but it is something we need to realize that it's no longer that we don't have them coming in and doing the education. And in the past, what I really found unique about the middle school resource officers is the moment we had an issue, we would ask them to change their lesson plan to address that issue. Now, one year it was kids in the sixth grade with huffing, and immediately they went in and they taught classes and they educated the teachers. Um, when they thought there might be some gang activity, they educated the teachers on the kind of graffiti to look for in the kids' books. They were in the classroom talking to the kids about the consequences. We don't have that connect this year, and it's most likely not going to find its way into any budget next year. Now, um, the officers, of course, will actively go after any grant but that's just another area that has been cut at the state level and trying to stay within their available funds. Um, but I think it's important for us to know as a school community that that's something that we've lost. Um, and if you watch the police lottery mm -hmm. and you have your ear to the community, you'll start to see the repercussions of that. So um, I just wanted to bring that to you. Can we reduce the number of police officers? I think we really need to um, proactively work with the Board of Selectmen to see how we can get time in their budget. Um, yeah. uh, this, this, is, this is still town, no, the town not yeah. 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 This is still part of the town. It would, would seem like yeah, it would be you know, part of the, the activity of the police department. They must have been using the grant to pay them overtime, I would assume, to participate in this program, or... Yeah, I'm not really sure how that yeah. fell into their budget, how they used... But I'm thinking that funds. they don't have the money to support the program. That's what they're correct. Right. Yeah. So we need, yeah. to, we need to do... Like, we do need to speak with them yes. and see what we can do to... And you're right, I don't think it was part of their regular shift, because right. I know Mike would come in the morning and he had just gotten off the night shift, so it was additional time. Um, and then I'm just going to distribute to you, but I'll give it to you later, um, something that I got from um, one of the school resource officers, Tom Hatch, and, and <coughs> they talked to me on Bill and Coffee. We have a memorandum of understanding between our school department and the police department as it pertains to our new security cameras. And the police department also have a, a policy for us to review that how do they interpret our memorandum agreement and how do the officers then proceed to use our security to aid them. So I have copies of those. Um, Officer Hatch asked me to share with the committee, um, and Dr. Manville's going to go over it with his administrative team and so that we're all on the same page when we're using school security. So, all right. Um, Dr. Manville, the next item is the chairlift at the middle school. Chairlift at the middle school, thank you. Um, Mr. Fouchere came to see me, and he understands that this is uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, but uh, as you know, he's reorganized the middle school, and um, so he's got the sixth grade is upstairs. Uh, it's a completely, um, the school within a school for the sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade are, are intermingled downstairs. Uh, there's a different bell schedule. He's, he's really created a situation for the sixth grade that we think is going to be, result in a much stronger learning experience. But next year, he has he is aware of at least one fifth grader coming up who cannot navigate the stairs. 
and he doesn't have a way to get that person upstairs, which means what he probably would do is put the person in the two-teacher two team, move the two-teacher team downstairs, which means some seventh graders have to move upstairs. And uh, So what he asked me if I would ask the committee to look at is putting a garavanta, I'm using the word garavanta, but putting a chairlift in the uh, middle school which would take care of this incoming fifth grader and also if there's a child who breaks a bone or for some reason or other can't navigate the stairs for even for a small period of time during the year, rather than move all the classes around, the child can work on the chairlift. Um, I asked him to get, get an idea of what the price would be. It's been years since I've had anything to do with chairlifts. Um, and so I think attached to the memo that you have in, in your packet, there is in fact some information from, uh, and, and a quote from Garavant. And I guess I have to hasten to say right now that this is no, they don't have any inside track, they just happen to be around, and they gave John a quote. We know that uh, absent these guys being on the state bid list, we don't know if they are or not, we would have to go out and get three quotes and go through the whole process. So we, we, we understand it. Okay, they're not, so we would have to do that. Um, but he would just like the committee to to uh, think about it and consider perhaps um, adding to your budget or somehow or other uh, funding a chairlift for the school. I will tell you that um, in one of my uh, previous lives, uh, I was a high school principal and um, New England Association of, of Schools and Colleges came in and would not give me the uh, you know, that were not handicap accessible, and we're not going to be handicap accessible because of the way the building was built. And, and uh, so it's, you know, it's something that I think you have to look at positively, and I think it's something that you really should consider because it's, it, it's, the building is going to have to be handicap accessible. And I know that if we get the building process, we're going to be handicap accessible because of elevators and escalators and particularly like the jacuzzi on the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's New North High School. You have that. You was mistaken with North. Yeah. yeah. North ready. <laughs> right. North. North. Yeah, so you I gotta, understand. You I'm sorry. Up. I lost my head there for a second. Um, but it's, 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 it's something that you might want to think about. I, I, this is just one more example. You know, we've had a school here for 50 years or however many years, 45 years. It has no, no elevator, no access to the second floor. How did we do it? How, how was that school built? How was the school built without, I guess it wasn't required back then. It was not no. required, no. So you have a kid come into the school next year, and if this chairlift doesn't exist, then that kid is deprived of participating in the true sixth grade experience because they have to somehow rearrange the entire school so that the kid can can learn properly. Right. And, and, and again, it's 30, the, the bid we have is over $31,000, which is money we don't have, but this is obviously something we should have in this school. Should, yeah. should this have gone on? I was just going to say, should this have been on the small cap? Uh, you know. Should John, I believe John wants to do this. Well, he needs to do it in the summer. Small cap or large cap? I, you know, first, I, my heart breaks that we have a student that just can't be like all the other students who come in mm -hmm. and go to the assigned classes. But if what we're going to ask John to do is to bring the sixth grade down to the first floor, then I think we need to ask him to do that, to accommodate this student. So he's part of all the sixth grade experience, not just a single team. Um, I know it's disruption. But it defeats the purpose of having the seventh and eighth grade together and the sixth grade it, in their you know, own if learning it, experience. Until we get the building project that's what we're asking the kids. We asked a building full of bachelor students to go to Stoneham for two years. That's what they dealt with, so that they could have a beautiful school in the end. So if for a couple of years we're going to have to make some changes, then that's something I can live with. You know, we're also living with other issues in the school that impact all the students, air quality, let me ask you a question. So say we move the 8th grade upstairs and an 8th grade kid breaks his leg skiing. Then what, what do we, then he can't, then the kid can't go upstairs for, he can't make his way upstairs for three weeks, say. Or four. Right. Uh, we should have this in the school. That's what I'm saying. I, yes, absolutely, 100%.
and we have some modules that we would have to rearrange too. And I don't like having to rearrange. I wish we could accommodate every student with or without special needs. But we're going to ask the community to go along with us for what could be a $70 million project. And in the interim, we're going to have to put up with some things. We're not going to ask the student to put up with anything. We're going to ask John to move his classes to the first floor to accommodate the sixth grade. And I think we can ask that of John and the staff. It's not an imposition to the students. All right, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we add this to the large capital. I'd like to make a motion that we add, to, add this to large capital and put in an amount of $35,000 to cover the costs, even though I hear what you're saying. I, I, I Large cap is a fine place. So if we add that to the large cap that we've already requested, it gives us an opportunity to... Well, that'll be on a separate warrant. Right, right. and it would right. be bonded, probably, right. with everything else. So that, that's, I'd like to do it yep. that way. I agree, in that's our not in our budget. Right. I just don't want to jeopardize no, those agree. textbooks in our budget. No, I agree. So, so we, we have a motion and a second? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. How much should we put in? 35. 35, okay, thank you. Okay. But I, I, just to get back to that point, I mean, I, I agree, we don't want to take things out of it, but this is just another one of those things that we, we probably should have had 20 years ago here. Exactly. Yes. And mm -hmm. you've you put kids at risk on running crutches on the stairs right. in, a, in, in the the herd operation that was on <laughs> at, Benji, at the Bell. Yeah. And it is a creative solution. We've right. Lucky. We've been lucky. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's not an elevator right. um, being Which built on the exterior. It's a chairlift. Right. So. Plus, in a couple of years, of course, I have to go to the second floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, bills and payroll are all set. Yeah. Minutes. I. On the minutes, there was one thing um, on the second page of the regular meeting. Um, the, the first, uh, the first paragraph there, not under secondary school building, but before that, the last sentence says, "Dr. Manville, and Mr. Venezia, and Mr. Bowers met with Brad Dorr of Dorr and Whittier to garner further information about." Did that? I'm confused. There was there a meeting? Yeah. So you had met you had met with him beforehand. Yeah, we yeah. met. We met. Okay, uh, I, thought, I thought it was referring to a future meeting. We were no, no, we, we met with Brad uh, okay. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. All right, and then the only other thing I had is um, on page four it says executive session. We voted to go to executive session, but then on the top of page five it says Dr. Manville presented proposed changes to the high school handbook and discussion followed. No action was taken by the committee. Oh. Shouldn't that be before the executive session? Yeah, one's in the sun. No. Did you? Because you'll remember we went into executive session. Oh. We adjourned from oh, executive session. Oh, that's right. Session, and, and remember and that? I presented and after that's why executive session. Okay. We were back in open session. Okay. Okay. No, you weren't here. Yeah. You weren't here. So you that was, that's that right. So it was executive session, and then we came back into open session. Yep. And I remember that now. Keith discussed the proposed changes to the high school handbook. Right. handbook. Okay. Never mind. So the, mean, the minutes are, unless anybody else has something. No, make a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes for the open session of February 2010. Sure. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. Executive session. And I'll also make a motion to approve the minutes of the executive session for February, February, February 8, 2010 as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Um, budget update. Kyle, do you have? Yes, this is the monthly budget update, and I really don't have too much to report to. I think that's good news. This has been a, a year that is uh, so far had no problem surprises that have manifest themselves. Special education has been very close to budget. Um, we went into this year, of course, uh, knowing what our salary costs were going to be, so uh, we have have any salary pool issues. Um, uh, so far, uh, the areas in the budget that are showing uh, the possibility of uh, leftover funds would be the legal area, because both in special education and in the superintendent's office, there hasn't been 
great deal of legal costs. Uh, another one is unemployment. We've had uh, little or no unemployment costs this year. So um, the year moves on, and um, that's why I, I said earlier I'm cautiously optimistic about the ability to uh, devote some funds to some of those small cap issues. Um, be happy to take questions, um, but I'm comfortable saying we're in pretty good shape. Great. Questions for the call on the budget. The next item is donations. Mr. Uh, McKay uh, contacted me last week and said that he'd received a, uh, a donation and the donor has asked to remain anonymous. Uh, I wrote down 1400, uh, over $1,400. Actually, is for $1,400 uh, and it's designated to buy a defibrillator for the Hood School. Uh, the check has been received, it's been deposited, we haven't done anything with it yet until the committee votes to accept the gift. Make a motion that we accept the anonymous donation of $1,400 to the Hood School for the purpose of purchasing a defibrillator with gratitude. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm always humbled by somebody that doesn't want recognition, yeah. you know? That's so nice. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, Keith, at our place we had this memo on the 8th grade pair advisors. Yes. A uh, little correspondence for you. I got this today. Uh, the 8th grade uh, peer advisors wanted to inform me that uh, they initiated a fundraiser to support uh, the folks who had been impacted by the earthquake in Haiti. They set up a dress for Haiti Day on Friday, February 5th. Uh, Teachers could wear jeans uh, for five bucks and students donate a dollar, and then they found matching funds. And anyway, long story short, is they sent $860 uh, towards the cause of uh, helping out the Haitians. You know, the uh, I know we talked about this earlier, but the three elementary schools uh, also ran programs uh, for that. So I would say that uh, I know the high schools involved, they don't have a figure, but, but I would say that. that was ready to send well over two two thousand right. dollars to uh, to help the people in Haiti. So anyway, they sent me this. They all signed it. Uh, I thought I would share it with you. That's great. You also have at your seat. I think I gave you the uh, Parent yeah. Association North Bend High School Parent Association newsletter. Yeah. Um, Mr. Bernard sent those along. And the last thing I believe I gave you, although this time of day, I'm not sure about anything anymore, um, was the um, uh, announcement from MASC on, uh, MA, um, MSBA right. on the uh, comment period on right. the changes to the law. And I didn't actually give you the changes to the law because those were the things that everybody was flying around the internet. I think we, we yeah. forwarded them to you at one point, but, uh, you know, I think you forward them to me, I we forward them to you. Yeah. And, yeah, everybody was forwarding to everyone. Uh -huh. so. In Chakaruchi is on those forwards as well. Yes, and he you got them share all. With his he family. had them when we uh, had the television, okay. uh, the, television the, the uh, telephone interview okay. with uh, Diane Sullivan. Great. I looked through those uh, fairly carefully, and it looked to me like they were all pretty reasonable. There are a couple of them that are. Kind of nice uh, requirement for daylight in classrooms. Okay. And, uh, uh, that's a little bit more expensive uh, than not doing daylight in yeah, classrooms. They were talking about uh, light coming in uh, from above. You know, so that's, that's a nicety. Uh, rules, but nice apparently, rules. They, they think that that's an important thing as well. That they wouldn't be able to have night school anymore. Okay, is there any need for an executive session? Actually, I just want, I had a couple of quick things. Sure. Um, one is I just wanted to, so, uh, an update on the superintendent search committee. Have, have all the, um, what are we, the uh, applicants? No, the subcommittee, search the, committee the, the search committee members been notified. And do we have a meeting date for them yet? Or? Yeah. Mike Gilbert has a meeting date of March 8th. Yeah. Um, he has 
yet to confirm the time with me. Okay. So I haven't sent a memo out to everyone yet. Okay. Um, I will do that tomorrow, even without a time from Mike. Okay. I It would be better if you had a date, but if you have he, to He's it. had that date since the beginning. But a time, yeah. We don't yeah. Have time. yeah. And then the other question was, I think the, the deadline for applicants is next week, correct? 26. Friday. Friday. This is Friday. It's Friday. Okay. I was hoping to get the search committee together before March 8th. Yeah. Um, and then Mike Gilbert put the brakes on that and says, yes, you know, a certain approach he uses, and he'd rather get his hands on the group and direct them first. So, so. we would expect that mid to late March, that search committee would be reviewing the X number of semifinalists, and then in April, early April, we would get them, hopefully. Yeah, Mike said, we're sticking with the original timeline. Okay. And he laid out dates, so I'll, I'll dig that He's out. He's actually, um, the way the timeline is right now, he will do his evaluation of the candidates on March 3rd. We have a school committee meeting on there. Right. And he will give to the school committee the names of the semifinalists. So that, that, that they're not supposed to be made public as right. semifinalists, so I right. guess that that's going to be an executive session, would be my guess. But, um, and then uh, I believe the, uh, the actual interviews uh, that Mike has on his timeline for the search committee are the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of March. Okay. And then at the 24th, they'll cut down to three to five finalists, and then the school committee will do site visits, and the actual uh, public interviews will be uh, the first and second week in April, culminating on the 15th, where the committee, yeah. if everything goes right on April 15th, the committee will vote uh, and select the superintendent. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so we have no right. idea how many applicants right. will pull. But we'll know by Friday. Well, we'll know, we'll know next week. Probably know next week. Okay. The other thing I just wanted to mention, um, it's interesting what's what's going on right now at the state um, in that there's uh, um, the education subcommittee of the state regional advisory commission has completed a study on regionalization oh, yeah. and uh, they're going to be meeting I believe with Lieutenant Governor Murray Wednesday to present their findings um, some of the things are interesting here because the Education Commissioner these recommendations give the Education Commissioner a lot of power in terms of deciding whether or not districts need to regionalize or not and, mm -hmm. and once the Education Commissioner sends um, a recommendation to some school districts, they have 60 days to respond with a better plan. So it's not, it's not a whole lot of time, but MASC is really on top of this. Um, Cliff, if you go online, it's, it's up on the mask. Um, yeah. uh, a couple of emails have been sent out about it. it. They right. were opposed to forced regionalization, especially given the commissioner that much power, the commissioner that played politics with the charter school in Gloucester. Right. Same mm -hmm. guy. Right. So. And, and it's inter interesting. One of the things that they're they're oh, whole, so we're one of the things they're recommending that no more of these types of districts be established K through six districts, which they say are not cost effective, and they will not they they won't they won't break up existing K through six districts. But they're trying to get them to merge with you know to make them K through twelve districts. Um, uh, some interesting recommendations in here, but I think it's something. Seeing what happened in Maine, where they basically the commission education commissioner up there came out forced all these towns to merge and then there was it was a lot there's an uproar and many towns got waivers and that that whole process is still um, kind of in limbo up there i think we ought to just keep our eye on this so i think we're, we're a big enough district where we're not going to be asked to to merge with somebody at this point yeah there's no reason for us to do any merging at all now our administrative costs are in still the low, right. lowest 25 right like everything else right we're in the lowest 25 of all districts, Correct. including regional districts, and we beat most of the regional districts. Yeah. That's it. I just want to talk about those things. Thanks. So, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. All in favor? Yay. Aye. I made the motion. Jerry second. That was very close. Yeah. <laughs> I was a little faster than you.